<laughs> Dude. Whoa. Okay. How close can we get to the thing? This entire bunker uses a completely custom built electrical system because of the side that it could not be a DC current otherwise the electrical output from here to the very farthest part yeah. of the bunker it would be completely weak to power anything so the point is to create a voltage kind of reciprocator 800 volts well it's maxed out at 800 volts I mean, a lot more than 800 volts and that's super really excited about nothing because how old is this thing? 1940s bro yeah it's still working perfect I cannot believe something. yeah for real So here is a bit closer look at it while it's off. That's the fan. That's the weird light bulb. Well, I see now that it should have been strapped in, but whatever. Yeah, this is this is sweet. On top of the record, yeah. Only well. Bermuda, that's a long way to come to the Isle of Man, isn't it? It is, yeah. You've been here before, have you? No, no. Uh, first time. I'm pretty quiet here then. Very much so. Yeah, very nice. That's nice and quiet. You get used to it because of the other time. Yeah. Uh, Bermuda used to be quiet, not anymore. Things, it's up to me, same better. Same better. We've got the. Now she's, the she's going up the hill now. Huh? The mopeds, the small bikes. Oh, yes, yeah. Very noisy. Right? Thousands of them. Thousands of them. Awesome. Used to be peaceful. Right? Yeah. I remember when they were in the first place. Incredibly yeah. smart. Yeah. 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 Hello, and today we're at the Kempton Steam Museum in South West London. Uh, my name's David Walker, and I'm going to show you the mercury arc rectifiers we have here that drives our 1920s machinery. In the early part of the 20th century, electricity supplies were not generally available. What there was was usually generated by small companies, mostly for their own need, and then distributed in the immediate local area. As a result, there was no standardization of the type of electricity or the voltage. Um, companies generally chose to generate whatever was convenient for their own needs. That might be DC, it might be AC, it could be high voltage or medium voltage. And if it was AC, it could be at any frequency that the machinery they used generated. On this site, it was convenient to generate DC voltage because what they wanted it for was to power motors and lights. And DC at that time was much easier when it came to motors. And they, so they chose to generate 200 volts DC. When the national grid was installed in the early 1930s, this was AC voltage at around 4, 15 volts, three phase, to 40 volts, single phase. Faced with the choice of either replacing all the machinery or to change the AC to DC, that was the simplest option. And the technology of the day was the mercury arc rectifier. Rectifiers work because they will only pass current in one direction. AC reverses current in, and continually, uh, in our case in the UK, 50 times a second. If you apply an AC voltage to a rectifier, it will cut out the reversed half of the cycle. So you get current that flows only in one direction. That is a form of DC. 
Mercury arc rectifiers were invented by a man called Peter Cooper Hewitt. He was the inventor of the mercury discharge lamp. He was trying to produce a light that was brighter than the currently available incandescent lamps. And he patented that in 1901, but realized that if you put AC across a mercury vapor lamp, it rectified into a form of DC. And from that, he developed the mercury arc rectifier. These contain a pool of mercury in the bottom of the bowl, which produces a vapor which fills the bowl. Around the periphery are the electrodes, the anodes, which collect the current. These rectifiers were made at the um, Hackbridge and Hewittick Company, which was actually based in Walton-on-Thames, just a few miles from where we are in this building today. Now, to start a rectifier, you need an arc. And as it's a totally enclosed glass envelope, what you have is a spring wire from a small arm, which is just out of sight, which has an electromagnet under it. When we start the rectifier, the electromagnet pulls the wire into the mercury pool. That shorts the electromagnet out, which releases the wire and creates a spark which is then picked up by two small anodes at the back to keep the arc flowing. What happens is when the spark is created, it ionizes the mercury vapor and makes it conductive. When we apply six phases around the main anodes and connect a load, the arc is picked up by each of the anodes and whichever of the anodes is positive at that one time, that's, what, that's the anode that conducts. So in fact, the arc is passed around between the, the anodes successively, round and around and around. Of course, it happens at um, a very rapid rate, and so you can't actually see it rotating. But what you will see is the, where the arc touches the mercury at the bottom creates a very bright spark. And because it's, the arc is moving around, this spark darts about. We have a transformer in the basement, which converts these incoming three-phase supplies to th six phases. But because it's rather large, you can't just connect it um, straight to the supply. So there's a starting sequence. Um, this takes about five seconds. So when I press the start button, there will be a gap of about five seconds. The arc will be struck and picked up and you'll see um, it operating. At the same time, the cooling fans at the bottom of the cabinet will also start. So I'll now move over to the end of the cabinet and press the start button. And the starting sequence is going through and immediately the, the rectifiers start. Now you'll see that because the electricity is flowing through the mercury vapor, the mercury vapor glows this characteristic blue-green color. The more current we pull through the arc, the brighter it becomes. And we can demonstrate that in, in just a moment. But to do so, I need to connect the rectifiers, these two rectifiers work in parallel, to the main DC switchboard. And we do this with the switch at the top, here. That's now connected these rectifiers to that switchboard, and you can see we're generating a voltage there. I shall now switch the mercury arc rectifiers onto the main distribution bus bars. There, we're now connected to the bus bars and can connect any, any of the loads around the building using the individual switches here. OK, I'm now going to switch on um, some power which will use the rectifiers. And you'll see that as I switch it on, the glow in the bulb will become brighter. Firstly, I'll connect a load which is 20 amps. You'll see the meter at the top um, read. 20 amps is fairly near the bottom of the meter, so it won't move a great deal. So the glow has got much brighter and all of the anodes are now in operation. If I switch that off and connect a load which is 40 amps, you'll see that gets brighter again. And the meter is now reading 40 amps. And with the two together, um, that's as bright as we will go today. It's about striking it up on the mercury pool. It's about two kilos of mercury in here, so you would not want to spill it. Shall we have a look? Obviously all the mercury should be in that bit there. A proper shot on that electrode. Or well, one of them. I've got six of them in there. It's quite big, I must be honest. And that amount of mercury is quite heavy. We should have a hot cathode, 
hotspot randomly scooting around on that virtually but we haven't quite got that right maybe a little bit more Some nice noises. Mm. Everything humming. Yeah. I think I might sit here and listen to that for a bit. <laughs> 